we call praise in this place. There is a sound of praise that is full of victory. There is a sound of praise that is full of confidence. There is a sound of praise coming out of the mouths of people who know who their God is. Are we all in agreement this morning that we serve a powerful God? Are we all in agreement that we serve a life-giving God? Amen. Amen means I agree, in case you didn't know what that meant. You keep that chase. You're on fire this morning. Woo! So, so good. Can we just all lift our hands this morning? The thing about praise is sometimes we praise and we don't feel like it. And sometimes our feelings override our praise. And I've walked through some pretty tough situations, some pretty hard seasons. What I've learned when I've gotten on the other side is I need to praise no matter what. The reason why we lift our hands is we're making a declaration. It's a posture. It's a posture of faith. It's a front-footed stance, if you like. Just say, no matter what, Lord, I will praise you. posture of worship. It's quite freeing. It means we're surrendering what we think, our lack of understanding, and we're giving it to God. In Jesus' name. Keep that going. I like it. It's good. Some of you just take a little bit of time to get there. Sometimes you've got to tell your fleshy side, uh-uh, you're not staying there anymore. I'm going to step out of that and I'm going to tell you what you're doing because I have the Spirit of God on the inside of me and He is a life-giving God. He's not one that shrinks back. He's not one that's on the back foot. God's got no problem with declaring who He is. And sometimes we allow our thoughts, our experiences, our pain, our hurt, the disappointment in things to determine our outcome. And I'm telling you now, you don't have to live like that. Lift your hands nice and high. Jesus. We honour you in this place this morning, God. We stand on your word. We thank you, God, that you can do all things. We thank you that you strengthen us. We thank you that you love us. You love us in our mess. You love us when we doubt. God, we declare victory over our situations right here, right now. Thank you, Jesus. You said live. You spoke to those dry bones and there was a rattle. There's a rattle happening in the sides, inside of you this morning like no other. That's okay. Thank you, Lord. I believe right now that things are breaking off people's hearts this morning. Things that are holding them back, the restrictions. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare right now in this place, because of your word, your word sends true, Lord. Father, I pray that this atmosphere be filled with faith right now, Lord. We declare your name over every situation. Shout out. 
I screwed, I don't want this to end. But we've got other things planned, like kids' church. Are you ready? Yeah? No? If you are visiting for the first time this morning, you do need to have them registered. They have to have a little sticker with their name on that. Head on down through the hallway. Ages run from, our program runs for ages one up to school year five. We have a mother's uh, light feeding room off to the side with a live feed as well. Why don't you t- jump up like some of you are already doing and say hi. We'll be back in just a few short moments. Good morning. How is everyone this morning on this beautiful Beautiful. daylight savings has Um, ended? Tim's very happy. Order has been restored to the universe. Yes, he has said that so many times. There is more light in the morning. So currently, right now, it's actually. No, we're not. No. 11 o'clock. He always does this. Is it? Is that how it works? Just. And then, no, I was talking to someone on the door this morning and they were saying, like, uh, we were talking, when does the actual um, time change? Is it at midnight? Oh, when it actually happens. Yeah, at three o'clock, two in the morning. Yep. You guys are still all fired I up. I know, they love it. It's a good vibe up here. It's nice. Anyway, who's a fan Notices. of daylight savings? Who's like, not a fan? I like light in the morning. Oh, ooh, not the majority actually like daylight savings. I'm a daylight saver. I love it. Hey, good morning at home to you guys as well. Great to have you with us. Welcome to all our visitors this morning. Church, why don't we give them a big warm welcome. It's always a delight to um, have guests in the house and we'd love for you to stick around uh, after the service. We have cafe on. Uh, This week we have prayer meeting on Tuesday night, 6.30. It's gonna be epic. Then I think we have another one in June as well. So Tuesday night here at the church, 6.30. And also Youth Sunday Sesh is happening today straight after the service. And then this coming Friday is our end of term party. Come on. 6.30 to 8. It's good. So many cool things planned. So be there. It's going to be a fun time. And you're about to preach, but before he does that, We've got options on the screen for how to give today. Always a good moment. Give and be merry. Give and be merry. I don't really have that. That's it. (laughs) Have you got anything to say? I'm going to say something about that later on. Oh, there we go. We'll just merge that into the into the two. Awesome. Is that all right? Yep. Great. Chase Chase is literally on fire today. That's a good. Been practicing, Chase. Nice. Been practicing. Yeah, look at him. He loves That's it. Hot. If we no. just leave you, how long could you keep doing that for? I, I feel like there's a bit of a we, there's we, something more rumbling there. Do you have something trying to give us? We can come back next Sunday. He might still be there. Go on, Chase. Give us something. Go, Chase. Play us out. Play us out. Come on. Didn't work. Didn't work. Clever, man.
I thought we were in sync. <laughs> no, we were. All right, good. Uh, how good was last Sunday, by the way, Resurrection Sunday? I think it's been our biggest service of the whole year was last Sunday, which was fantastic. The place was packed out. It was really, really good. Plus, we had baptisms last week as well, which is always fantastic. And um, I was talking to someone after the service, and they were saying, this is amazing. I want to come here every single week. And I said, I said, that is good that you want to come here every single week because this is amazing. I just said, but, you know, by the time Saturday comes next week, you may be not so keen to come just knowing the cycle of when you're here. It's like, this is amazing. I'm going to be back next week. And then, and then your week happens to you. And you, Saturday night, you're like, oh, now I'm tired. I don't know if I want to go back. And I'm just thinking about the, um, that song we were just singing because it is like dry bones rattling. It's kind of like, it is a, it's a Bible verse in Ezekiel 37 where it says that God brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and then God asks Ezekiel and he says, what can you see? And so look it up in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 37. And Ezekiel can see, uh, he says, I can see a valley of dry bones. And then God says to Ezekiel, he says, well, speak to the bones then. And uh and it's a, it's a prophetic scripture, if you like, because it, it goes on to say uh, that the, the valley is full of bones, but they are very dry and they are cut off. And it's, a, um, it's an interesting passage of scripture. It's actually talking about the church and what can go like wrong in a church, if you like, when, when people that are on mission together, but then they get cut off. And they get isolated. There's a, there's a passage that says, uh, he who isolates himself rages against all wise judgment. And so there's something about the coming together that is so important that we don't get isolated or we don't get cut off. And uh, because when we get cut off, we get dry. That's why I was, and I know that the enemy is against us coming together. And that's why I said to this person, on, I said, like, I know that you want to be here next Sunday, but... There is an opposition that does not want you to be here next Sunday. You just got to be weary. There's something powerful when it comes to coming together. We cannot get cut off. But he says to Ezekiel, I I want you to speak to the bones. And it's like, well, what what do I say to them? And he basically, God says to Ezekiel, I want you to speak life into them. I want you to speak breath into them. And Ezekiel then has this this vision. And uh, Having like a spiritual experience is amazing because God does speak to you through a vision. He speaks to you through giving you like a a picture of something. So if I was to say to you, pink elephant, I want everyone to think about a pink elephant. Just everyone close your eyes and just think, all right, pink elephant. What does a pink elephant look like? Okay, well, obviously big and it's pink. It's interesting vision. And I was like, okay, now stop thinking about pink elephant. Now I want you to think, okay, green apple. Green apple, that's another, okay, green, kind of slightly shiny green apple with the little stalk coming out the top. Green apple sitting there. So we're, prob- so we're all kind of seeing the same thing, yes? This is not mind games, by the way. I'm just <laughs> trying to, am I getting brainwashed right now? <laughs> it's just like getting a picture in your mind just because of a thought. Often God will speak to people through a, through a thought like that and then you'll get a picture. So when God says to Ezekiel, what can you see? And Ezekiel can see something. He can see, I see a valley of dry bones. And then God leads them on this little um, dialogue, of you, if you like, of, okay, now I want you to see something different. I want you to start to speak life into something that's... Um... So this message this morning is called Trust Him. I came home from our morning prayer time yesterday and I said to Cindy, I said, when all else fails, we should trust God. And she said, well, sorry, front row, you're wrong. She said, no, we should trust God always, not just when things fail. And I was like, ooh. Yeah, she corrected me. And then, anyway, I didn't want to call it what she came up with. I didn't want to call it her idea just because of, then it would be, so I called it Trust Him. Because I just couldn't stand the idea of her being right. We're not competitive at all. 
Okay, so last week we were talking out of John chapter 3, and I wanted to talk about this uh, a little bit just to get us started on this concept of trusting God. It's in John chapter 3, verse 4, and it says, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water, and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. I don't know, do you wonder if Jesus was seeing the look on Nicodemus's face like, oh yeah. And the Jesus like, don't marvel, like don't. Uh... And he goes on to say in verse eight, he's like, the wind blows where it wishes. So this is, and he's, um, this is good. Jesus is communicating to Nicodemus, who is a teacher, and he's a, Nicodemus is a teacher of the Word of God. He's the, one of the greatest teachers in Israel, and his job is to teach the Israelites the Word of God. And now he's having a conversation with the Word of God. The, the Bible says that Jesus is the Word become flesh. So Jesus is literally the embodiment, if you like, of the Word of God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So now the teacher of the Word is having a conversation with the Word. I love it. The Word of God is standing there right in front of him. So now what he's been, Nicodemus, what he's been teaching his whole life, he's now got a person standing in front of him who is the Word of God in the flesh and he's having a conversation with the Word of God about the Spirit of God. So the Word of God is explaining to Nicodemus about the Spirit of God. This is important because Nicodemus, who's a teacher of the Word, didn't understand the Spirit. And you need both. And it's interesting that the Word became flesh and is now communicating about the Spirit of God. And he's having a conversation with the teacher of the Word. That this is how you... You know the Word, but you don't know the Spirit. This is what the Spirit is like. Let me tell you about the Spirit, because you can be all wrapped up in the Word, but have no Spirit. Or you can be all wrapped up in the Spirit, but have no Word. So he's saying, don't marvel. The wind blows where it wishes. And you can hear the sound. It's like the song, wasn't it? This is what he said, live, live. Every time I sing, Sarah Crawley laughs at me. It's very dis- <laughs> Oh, they, they will not let me join the music team. I, I keep coming to practices, I try out. And... The wind blows where it wishes, you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So this is, the, this is the conversation happening between Nicodemus and Jesus Christ. Nicodemus has come to him by night. He wants a private little one-on-one -on -one gathering with Christ to have a conversation. Nicodemus' heart is obviously open to Jesus because he's like, he's gone there. He calls him teacher. He calls him rabbi. He's, he's, he's humble. He's like honoring. He's t and he's, he's wanting to know the thing that I've been teaching my whole life. Can you tell me more about it? But because I, I got a feeling in my heart, I know that I know the words, but I need the connection in the in the heart. And Jesus then is giving him this example. It's like imagine wind; it blows where it wishes. Um, you can hear the sound of it. You can hear it, but you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going to. But it's but it's 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 there. And he's trying to like the the master teacher, being Jesus, is trying to teach Nicodemus about how to sense the spirit of God. This is how you sense it. You can't, you can't see it. You can kind of hear the sound of it. You know it's there. You could feel it, but it's not something you can literally grab hold of. It's more like a picture, if you like. God will speak to you in a picture, in a vision, but then you've got to act upon what you're seeing or sensing. But whatever God sh reveals to you or shows you by His Spirit, here's a great thought, it will, uh, it will line up with His Word. Yeah. So, the, the, two, the two go together. You need the Word of God and you need the Spirit of God. Now, I wanna talk now out of 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. So Jesus is the Word become flesh. God leads you by His Spirit according to His Word. Say that again. God leads you by His Spirit according to His Word. So the word, the word of the Word of God is the foundation. It's like the boundaries. It's the it's the rules. It's the here are the parameters. Here's how God will work. This um, this book is like it explains to us the character of God. It gives us reassurance in who God is. It's this is His character. This is like all these different people's experience of, of God. And it says that the Word of God is written by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so we get this great little insight into the character of God. And it's written down on these pages. Yet there is also now living the Spirit of God. And that's what we've got to trust. I want to read this out in Proverbs chapter 3. And this is like a father talking to a son. Verse 1, my son, do not forget my law, obviously it cannot be easily forgotten, but a father telling a son, don't forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Can you see how the two work together? Let, let my heart keep the commands. Like you're gonna need to use both. It's the, there's the commands, but it's gonna come out of your heart. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. So when we, when we keep the law of God, when we keep his commands out of our heart, it's actually gonna make us healthy in life. It's, it's gonna affect our person, our being, our, our, even our body. It talks about like that we'll, it's gonna help our health by keeping his commands. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So this is just, just like Nicodemus, this is a spiritual reality, words, if you like, that are talking about a spiritual experience. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. So same thing, you need mercy and truth. You could say word and spirit. You could, uh, some people want mercy, but they don't want truth. Some people want truth, and then they lack mercy. So see again how you need, both need, it's like the Bible says, speak the truth in love. Some people just want to speak the truth and then it comes across as a cutting hard edge because there's just, there's just truth, but there's no love. So, you, but you need, you need both. You need the truth because the truth will set you free, but we also need love. So, and, and you've got to be sensitive to when it's the right time to say, I'm going to now show mercy, but, or now I'm going to speak truth, but I'm going to speak truth and love. So I'm going to show mercy, but I'm also going to have truth. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Okay, this is, this is a good one to memorize if you don't know this one, verse five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on, on your own understanding. If you, um, if you wanna memorize that, you just, talking an American accent. Y'all gotta trust in the Lord. I won't go on in that. And lean not on your own, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Trust in the Lord, so trust is a heart issue. How do I trust God? I trust God from my heart. I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm not leaning on my own understanding. In all of my ways, what I'm doing, I'm uh, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so it comes down to, it's a trust, it's a trust issue. Trust him. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. So that's a humility. It's a humility thing. Don't you love this? Because this is a father writing to a son, giving like some real dot points on here's how to have a good life. Here's how to do well in life. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. That's important, that health to your flesh and strength to your bones. A lot of people now have struggled with like, they say, I've got, I've got anxiety. And it's like, even in people saying that, they're admitting to the fact, like I'm, it's nearly like a self-fulfilling prophecy, I've got this. 
this is happening to me, I've got it, I'm, I'm a fearful, I've got anxious. Um, and it's like when we, when we live under the parameters, if you like, or the boundaries of the Word of God, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, depart from evil. There, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're disciplining your mind, you're putting boundaries into your life and it will affect your being, it'll affect, it'll affect your health, it'll be uh, health to your flesh and strength to your bones. It goes on in verse nine, which it kind of changes chapters, not chapters, but it changes, changes angles. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So that, like this is a great little dot point in regard to your possessions, in regard to giving. This is the giving Offering message, if you because we missed it before. I'm reading it out right now. Honour the Lord with your possessions. What, so what are possessions got to do? Possessions are the things that we hold close to our heart. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Or where your heart is, there your treasure is. The, t- the two, once again, the two go together. And so it's saying, when, whatever possessions you've got in life, make sure you're honouring the Lord with your possessions. With the first fruit, so God wants the first, not the second. He wants your first fruit, whatever first comes into your dwelling or your place. He's like, well, whatever that first portion is, make sure you honour the Lord with that. And honour is an interesting concept when we think of how do I, how am I going to honour someone? Honour has an attitude and honour has a tone to it. It has a, it has, like Cindy was saying, it has a certain posture. If I'm going to show honour, I'm showing respect. It's like the, the, I'm honouring the Lord with my possessions, with what I've got. Because here's the reality. Everything you've got comes from Him anyway. So nothing that you have is really yours because at the end of the day, it all comes from Him anyway. God's allowing you to have possession of it for a time. And then, so He's giving it to you for a moment, it's kind of, in one way, it's kind of yours if you, because he gave it to you, but then because he gave it to you, you've got it, but yet you get to honour God with it. It's like having kids in the home and, and they're saying things like, you know, um, this is my bed and th- these are my clothes and, and then as a parent, you're like, yeah, everything you've got, remember where it comes from. They're like, you know, Dad, you can't come into my room. Sorry, whose room? This is my room. These are my things. And, and this is why this is important, son, son to a child, because you're teaching your children about behaviour. And this is the same in this little passage of Scripture. It's a father talking to a son, teaching him about behaviour, teaching him how to honour and respect where something comes from. Saying, honour the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all your increase. If you do that, in verse 10, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. You know, it says um, in Malachi, it says, bring all the tithes into my house so there will be food in my house for you. Isn't that fascinating? So bring the tithe into my house, which is God's house. And the reason why you're bringing the tithe into his house is so there'll be food in the house for you. And it's not talking about financial blessing. It's talking about a spiritual blessing. It's talking about a food that you need that you can't get from anywhere else. It's gonna come from the Holy Spirit. And it's when you've set your heart up right and your heart's in a good place and you're honouring the Lord out of your heart and you'll find there'll be food for you, but it's a food that you can't get from anywhere else. It's a spiritual thing on the inside. It's a peace on the inside. It's a joy on the inside. It's a strength on the inside. He's saying, I'm not gonna, because possessions are only gonna do so much. But when you've got like that on the inside of you, a spirit on the inside of you, it's a lot different. So he goes on in verse 11. My son, do not despise the chastening, chastening, correction of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. There is a fascinating scripture, I think it's in Hebrews, where it says, he that is without correction is without love, which is a terrible, terrible Bible verse, isn't it? If you're without correction, you're without love. Do you know what that, you know what that means? 
if no one's taking the time to correct you, I don't want to upset anyone. If no one's taking the time to correct you, no one cares about your future. That's what it literally means. God corrects the person that he loves. Why is he bringing correction? Because correction is like bringing boundaries when, when our thoughts or our ways are not lying. And he brings correction. He says, oh, but don't despise it. Don't be, don't be negative on it. Don't be, don't be rebellious in nature against it. Like accept the correction of the Lord and you'll find it's actually good for you. He's, he's correcting you because he cares about you. He's correcting you because he, he loves you. And so we gotta trust in the Lord with all our heart. The reason, I guess this is um, kind of important, someone said to me recently, they, um, without going into it all, but obviously I had a bit of a traumatic experience over our Christmas holiday, and then someone asked me the question, did that experience affect your faith in God? And, uh, and I was like, well, no, it didn't affect my faith. And did it affect your belief in God? Well, I was like, well, no, it didn't affect my belief because I tr I'm trusting God that God knows the whole story. I trust that God knows the whole picture. He knows the beginning from the end. So yeah, I might go through some bad experiences and I feel like I'm a good person. You might disagree, but... And I feel like sometimes bad things happen to me and I'm a pretty good person. Sometimes I say to God, I'm a pastor of a church, Lord. This is, I'm very good. And bad things are happening to me. Why are bad things happening to good people? You know, and it's like, because I, I trust that God knows the whole picture, that so doesn't affect, so yeah, some bad stuff happens in life and you're like, man, this sucks. Why are bad things happening? Why you look at the world and you think, oh, the whole world can be bad at some time, you know? Like there's a lot of issues that people have, the issues of life. In fact, in fact, it says the issues of life come out of the heart as well. Guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. And um, someone asked me recently, how many members in your church? I, said, I think we've got 330 people uh, that regularly attend this church that are on our membership. And I thought, oh, it's 330 issues. <laughs> People have issues. We all have issues and, they, and we can't get away from it. And God tries to bring kind of like some, like God's not against us. God's for us. And, uh, and it's important that we trust Him with all our heart because there is a different culture in the world today that will try and say to you, do whatever you want to do. Go wherever you, do what you're feeling. Go with your feelings. If you feel it, it must be right. And God goes, oh, don't trust your feelings. Trust in the Lord. Trust in His ways. Because feel like that's what I'm saying. Like You need the Spirit of God, but you also need the Word of God. So this, the Spirit of God will always work in alignment with His Word. So sometimes we've had people come, we, we feel like God's telling us this. Okay, show me the Scripture that aligns up with what you feel God's telling you. Oh, we can't find a Bible verse for it, but it feels right. The, the two always work together. You always need the Word of God and you need the Spirit of God, and that's what helps us trust Him. So here's the word, what the word trust means. Firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something. Relations have to be built on trust. And, and um, I wonder if God trusts me or am I meant to trust him? That's an interesting thought. Is it, does he trust me or am I, is it more like I just need to trust him? I think I've got to trust him. That's what it says, trust in the Lord. I got to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding, knowing that he knows the beginning from the end and in that I've got faith and confidence that it's stable, that it's consistent and that's what allows me, if you like, when I'm going through a bad season or a bad time, it's not gonna rattle or rock my faith. Like I'm, I'm not measuring my connection to God based on whether it's a good time or a bad time. I, I understand there are gonna be good days and there are gonna be bad days, but whether it's a bad day, I'm gonna trust Him, and whether it's a good day, I'm gonna trust Him. Because God is gonna work all things together for good to those who are the called according to whose purpose the Bible goes on to say. So I wanna... Um, just mention some little C3 church values and culture points that if you go to the C3 church global website, you will find these 
and I should memorize these myself. I, I have kind of got them, but just. C3 Church is Christ centered, Christ centered, spirit powered, connect driven. If you think about Christ centered, the word become flesh, Jesus Christ, he is the central point of our faith. We are Christ centered, we are spirit powered. So we've got this word of God as our foundation, but yet we, I love what I love about C3. When I think Cindy and I joined up at C3 some, I don't know how many years ago, but we walked into like a C3 conference and we loved the fact that it was, it was like the word of God based, yet allowed for the Holy Spirit and the spiritual. And it was like, we, we felt like there's a great balance of both word and spirit. And then connect driven. It's the relationship factor. Is what I love about C3. I think two weeks ago we had Nick and Mel Hind here who are our, uh, Nick and Mel Hind are our overseers. Every C3 church has an overseeing pastor and then it's, it's always good because it's like, um, it's, the, it's the form of relationship or connection where you've got to allow someone to speak into your life. And so they come to our church and then we sit down with them and they're, they're our overseer and they, get, we, like, they see into our life. And then we allow them to comment on us. Does it, does it make you feel comfortable? <laughs> Having someone speak about you and comment on you and your life and you've and you got to like open up to a relationship factor and say, look, how, what did you think? How do you feel? And like, and then you got to allow them to say, well, we think you and Cindy need to, I'm not telling you what they said. <laughs> <laughs> they said, we're awesome, doing a great job. <laughs> Actually, oh, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. Ready? You want to know? You want to know? <laughs> they said after the, Christmas incident, they said, Tim, you should see a psychologist to make sure you're healing up well and that you've processed that traumatic experience. I was like, really? Yeah. And I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> so you know what I did the next week? Went and saw a psychologist. And I did two sessions and you'd be happy to know they said I'm fine. So there you go. I've got a, I've got a couple of little... <laughs> Couple of little things. Some of you are thinking, well, you need to go back. You get your money back. <laughs> Thank you very much. She said, no, you're processing everything. But it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm telling you that because we, I'm trying to lead by example, I guess. We put ourselves in an environment where we're going to let someone speak into my world. And I think if, if we, if, if we are all doing that, and it's, it's not nice or sometimes for all of us, but I trust in the people that God's placed over me. The Bible says, submit yourself to those that God has placed over you. And so I trust if I submit myself to them because God placed them over me, that it's gonna go well for me. So it's a, it's a boundary that God's put in place and, and, and then I've gotta be obedient to it and listen to what, and then act upon it. And it's like, all right, if that's what you think I should do, I'll go, I'll go do that. It's the practical outworking. And it's all, it all comes back to, am I trusting, trusting him? And uh, I've found that, to trust something at times is to relinquish control. And uh, that's an interesting little thought when you've got to relinquish control because we love to control and to trust is to actually say, well, no, I'm not gonna control it. I'm gonna trust that they've got my uh, whatever best thoughts in, in mind. Why don't we get the band back up if we could? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good days ahead, people. Good days ahead. Thank you, mighty God. I wanted to pray this morning. Uh, we often get people that have, you know, uh, had experiences in life at different places and different situations and have been involved in different relationships and connections with people and 
that's left a bad scar, if you like, on them. And why don't we all stand? And sometimes what can happen is we, we struggle to trust again. And the worst part about that is we can, we can even struggle to trust God. We can, was he, has God got my best intentions? God is 100% got your best intentions and your dreams and your desires in his mind and in his heart. He wants what's best for you. Why don't we just close our eyes this morning? Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, you're in this place. We know, God, that no weapon formed against us is gonna prosper in Jesus' mighty name. We know, God, that the anointing, that the presence of the Almighty God breaks the yoke, breaks chains off people's lives in Jesus' name. Where there are areas in our life that have been blockages to allowing your spirit to allowing us to trust You completely with our life. Hurt and damage where we feel to try and control or hold back certain areas. 100 if I give my life completely to God, will it be good? Will it work out? Holy Spirit, I'm believing right now there are people here this morning and you're struggling to give your heart completely to God. It's like you're reserving, you're holding something back. And I'm believing this morning for healing in your heart. You're gonna bring the best part of you. You're gonna bring the best you. You're gonna give it all to the Lord. You're gonna give your heart completely to Him. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, I thank You right here, right now. In this place, God, in Your presence, in Your goodness, in Your mercy, chains will fall off people's lives. God, touch every person under the sound of my voice. Let Your Holy Spirit and power bring confidence, bring boldness, bring courage. We thank You, God, You're in this place. In Jesus' Name, everybody said, Amen. Trust in the Lord. We're gonna finish with a song. Do you want me to sing? Drop on to the world.
I can feel encouraged, but I can also feel very challenged. And I think that's a good thing, because I don't want to live too comfortable. So I hope you're encouraged by that word today, but maybe some things to think about as well. Um, dive a little deeper in the word this week. See what God has to say to you.